us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales. These are the adventures of The Rookies, a curated actual play of the tabletop role-playing game Masks, a new generation from Magpie Publishing. Previously on Tavern Tales, the group has split up, and now it's time for big revelations as we start the final session of The Rookies. Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy, raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So I won't end up being alone, cause I won't drink my drink alone. So what about you? One beer or two, I'll drink to you. And we're back. I'm Vern Tails, and we're counting down the hits of the superhero group known at the time as the Rookies. When we last left our heroes, they'd gone their separate ways. So let's look in on the wildest of conversations, the one between Bo, Solarian, and his parents. So the covers of this issue, a double issue of Rookies, actually has all of the members of the group in their various places. And the main cover, the one that was released en masse, you know, the 80% of all the covers out there, is of Solarian and Bo at his parents' house. And Salarian is holding his new spear, the spear <laughs> of Galarnon, right? Galarnon, something like that. Galad, Galad, something. <laughs> in one hand, and he's holding Bo's hand in the other. Aww. And his dad is pointing his finger in Salarian's face face okay and that and mom's behind the dad and sisters in one quarter are we in a fight or we look like a verbal dispute well i mean that's all you get to see so if it is a fight or a verbal dispute to remain to be seen in the covers of the you know inside the cover but on the front that's all we get is that one image okay now let's go around the table and you can introduce yourselves and describe your cover that i've assigned previous to the recording's initiation hi i'm Paige, and i play xpay and in this cover we see Terry and the general, they're standing quite close to each other, but the general has his giant palm on top of Terry's head, just looking at Terry with empathetic eyes. And you can kind of get the sense from his facial expression that he just feels bad that Terry is in this situation with a bunch of superheroes and Terry is Terry. <laughs> What's the expression between the two? Of frustration. Them? On both faces? Yep. Okay. But for very obvious different reasons. I think Terry's frustrated that the general's hand is on Terry's head like Terry is a little child that can't do anything. That's so funny. So in the back of the book, sometimes there's like alternate covers that were put pitched and you just get the general drawing sort of things of them. And there's a back cover of Terry and the general and it's big, beefy, over large general because he's like six foot five, mm-hmm. right? He's whole carrying Terry Chase in his arms like a baby. <laughs> and Terry has a soother in his mouth and is like cuddled up against <laughs> the general's chest. And of course, that one did not. Choices were made. Go much yeah. further than that. Yeah. But they wanted to share the hilarity of it. <laughs> Hello, I am Solarian and I play the character as Aaron, known as Aaron. So I have been instructed to do the cover of Alejandra and George Grady, the Purple Haze. So the style of this one is like a neo-noir crime film noir kind of thing. And we see it's a darkened, rainy street and Alejandra is walking away from George, flicking a cigarette into the night. And George is kind of just reaching out for her because he's been trying to catch up to her and things like that. So that's what he's doing. He has this look of disdain on his face and she has a look of leave me alone however that looks in someone's (laughs) face just disgust there was an alternate cover in the back as well okay and it's george grady in like makeshift furry handcuffs (laughs) 
<laughs> with his hit, like connected to a desk sort of thing and he has this like pained and ooh, a, like naughty expression on his face and there's like a light bulb over top of him and Alejandra's grilling him for information ah uh, yes it's also his thing all right hello I'm Marie Claire and I play Adora Smith the bull character who goes by Bo as her superhero name for now duh, duh, duh. I did actually write down my superhero name I'm changing it too so that's cool and I don't remember what it is but I did write it down so I didn't forget the cover that I am describing is XPay and caretaker Jeb and it's actually a mock done version of American horror the famous Americana painting with Jeb holding a shovel instead of a pitchfork <laughs> and XPay standing next there as the straight faced daughter of the farmer uh, <laughs> with the school in the background. I like that. That's portrait. Awesome. <laughs> Is a portrait in a classic American style because sometimes they do that like with the stylistic redoing of paintings. So it has been quite some time since last we gathered to play and we left a whole bunch of conversations mid conversating last time we got together. So if there is any internal discrepancies or whatnot between what we remember and what was recorded, we the players at the table are all you know admitting to a mea culpa. We try our best um, but we haven't edited that episode yet so we don't remember exactly everything that went on so if you have listened to the previous episode and then immediately followed into this new episode one oh thanks so much really glad to have you back <laughs> welcome awesome back <laughs> it's but been two seconds two we're idiots and while we try to take good <laughs> notes and i have a pretty good memory not everything is going to be exactly as it was last game and it's so, not worth fighting over yeah with so us yeah please don't Between yell us. at me no no i meant like it's not worth like, <laughs> no, like this isn't about us this is about the listener oh right we only I meant, care about yeah that. but thanks, like thanks for tuning in you will enjoy this alternative version let's just picture it as though a new writer has started this <laughs> thing to finish this one off because the old writer left or passed away or something bad happened yeah so lay off listeners. so we're going to start our adventure when the comic book opens up we are once again back in the living room of solarian's family mom and dad are there the sister stella is sitting on the mantle of the fireplace you know the lower one sometimes they have a little raised section to a fireplace they have that fully brick and she's sitting on that kind of half here half in the astral plane and most of the light in this entire room is being cast by the spear of galena and solarian's mom no Solarian, right? Says, yes. Solarian, you have been chosen as the herald of Galernon to share his light with this world and save our own. It is a very weighty and important promise. <laughs> yes, it is weighty. I hear what you're saying, but the prospect of destroying this world and all of its inhabitants on it, and he, and he gestures over to Bo, Ooh. does not appeal to me. Yes, I understand the ritual and traditions of our land, but maybe it's time we go down a different path of least destruction. Our homeworld will be destroyed, and all of our people will suffer. We will be the last dregs of our entire civilization, advanced as it is, and you would throw all of that away to save a backwoods, backwater plebeian race like these? And she just gestures dismissively at all of Bo. You just gestured to all of me. Hmm. <laughs> I would appreciate if you did not speak to her that way. I'm not speaking to her. I'm speaking about all of them. <laughs> we appear to be at an impasse. I don't see any point in destroying not anymore. Well, I'm certain if this one is that important to you or a few are that important to you, then save them. But don't sacrifice our people for this. She just gestures in a circle. Obviously not at Bo this time. <laughs> so what makes our race so much better than their? that we would have to sacrifice theirs. Think about yourself, Salarian. Are you not better than all of these people? And she's going to try and change your labels. Aww. She is going to say that you are superior, more superior and less mundane. Do you choose to accept this or do you reject this influence? Just flat out reject or do I attempt to reject? You would have to roll the dice to attempt to reject their influence. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to try to reject that. Just roll the dice. Wow. What'd you get? 
10. All right. On a 10 plus, you get to choose two. You get to clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong, shift one label up and one label down your choice, or you can cancel their influence and take a plus one forward against them. You can cancel your mother's influence over you. Yeah, so I'll do that one. Okay. And then I'm going to shift my labels in my <gasps> own way. What? Which way are you going to go? I'm going to shift superior down. Okay. And savior up. That makes perfect sense. What do you say to embody this where you remove the influence that your mother has again over you it will come back just so you know after this scene your mother's influence returns because she's an adult and that's how it works but for now you're rejecting their influence over you how does that look when you reject your mother's influence and tell them that you're not superior to the mortals you're their savior I understand what you're saying, Mother, but these people that are on this planet are no less important than our race, and they need to be saved just as much as our race does, and destroying them isn't the path to that. Then you have doomed us all, your father says, and he turns his face from you to never look upon your visage again. Shunned. No. (laughs) Meh. (laughs) Like, I'm not that attached to my weird cosmic space family. (laughs) Am I holding your hand? Is that what... Yes. Going on, I'm, I'm there for support. Okay, Adora's gonna do a squeeze of the hand and then a stroke of the arm and be like, one thing that I did learn on this humble planet is that you can never balance out the cost of killing one race to save another. If you're so upset with me, father, then Slarian just takes it. What is the spear made of? Do we know? Spear. It's made of spear. <laughs> can I? Is the it? Platonic ideal of spear. It's made it, of that. Is it breakable? <laughs> Are you telling me you want to shatter the spear? <gasps> potentially. I said potentially. I didn't say yes. I mean, it's made of whatever it is made out of. It's this comic book. It's not going to tell us. And it's not like going to be like so much carbon, so much titanium. It's not going to say those oh, things. Oh, okay. So, we don't have a chemical makeup of it. Okay. You have no idea. It appeared to you in another plane and you came with you to this one. So it's powerful. It might not even be made up of real stuff. It's just your imagination. It's just thoughts. <laughs> if you're so upset with me, father then by all means, do with the spear what you want. And he just throws it on the ground. Okay. And your dad just stands there, his back to you still, because he's he will never look upon your visage again. And your sister dashes forward to grab the spear from the ground. What do you do? I let her have at it. All right. She reaches out for the spear. Her hand passes through the spear. There's a flash and she cries out in pain. Are you all right, Stella? I can't. Whatever. You. I looked up to you. She looks up and down you. There she She just looked up at me again. <laughs> <laughs> daughter (laughs) be as upset as you want stella i'm not murdering a race of people the time for destruction will end you you made a choice i don't know what you're gonna do how are you gonna stop galanon our entire people can't stop galanon we'll find a way (laughs) she snorts and turns her back to you as well so i just have a question is galanon forcing you to do this do we know if galanon's forcing me to do this or if it's just forcing your people to do this yeah yeah they made this choice i mean do we know that background yes well in last game it was said and And the mom reiterates because why not, right? The mom says, if we do not find harvestable planets for Galanon in the time that we are allotted, Galanon will destroy and consume our planet. It's very eternal. Wow. And you have been chosen as the herald of Galanon for this planet. The spear's arrival is the signifier that it is time for this planet. And you, by exercising your abilities, open the doorway for Galanon. Well, shit. (laughs) And there's no way of sealing said door or assigning a different non-inhabited planet i'm sure it has to do with like killing of the people calling the herd whatever that sort of thing eating the life force of this planet which is populated by almost eight billion people mother i don't know what you want me to do my mind is made up so are you two going to abandon me like stella and father have excuse me who has abandoned who you have a responsibility to our people as the chosen of galanon and you are forsaking our entire people all of us for the plight of a few backwater apes you keep calling them backwater but these people are much more advanced than you think and besides our people have been annihilating races for for millennia now. Yes, we have. What else would you a- ask of us? We must find a way to end this vicious cycle. I see. You will be the downfall of us all. Go. I will need to speak with the council to tell them that the Chosen of Galanon has rejected his claim and has sided with a backwater people and will not open the gateway. Make sure to say hi for me. <laughs> Suddenly, you're not in the house anymore. Bo still with me, or did she get left there? Yeah, suddenly, 
Solarian is not in the house anymore. <laughs> oh, shit. However, you know how you threw the spear to the ground? Yeah. And that spear was maybe like four or five feet away from you, just in front of you to the left. Spear is four to five feet away from you on the ground, a little bit to the left. Follows you wherever you go now. Oh, okay. Like a- and you're still standing there. Oh, God. <laughs> You can see Stella a little bit. Stella turned away from Solarian, but you can still see Stella. And there is a, a glistening galactic tear gl- sliding down her cheek. <sighs> so awkward. So I'm like dating your son and he's not willing to commit genocide. So I'm going to go. It's lovely to meet you all. Thank you for inviting me to your home. Next time I'll bring a gift. I'll bring quiche. <laughs> cookies banana bread you know that was a period of time where everybody brought us banana bread it was super weird whenever they came to visit anyways i look i start looking for the door you know where the door is i'm gonna leave all right you turn to go all right the mom calls out to you wait yeah. um adora adele no adora right yes you all have names he's about to kill us all not if i have anything to say about it i'll make sure we're good don't worry we'll get you away from this bad deal with the devil Oh, I I don't think that there's anything that you could say that could change as complicated and as evolved a mind as my son's. But it's nice that you try. And she looks very patronizingly at you. (laughs) So I'm going to (laughs) go. Again, lovely to meet all of you. Officially as your son's girlfriend. Uh, Yeah, so bye. Thank you for having me. I'm just going to go. And I open the door and leave. You have no idea where Solarian yeah. is. But thankfully, as soon as you open the door, you see Solarian. He's standing on the street. What has happened with you and the spear? So he, he just he, he's looking at it, clearly understanding that where he goes, clearly it goes. So he's just going to pick it up and inspect it begrudgingly and then just store it on his back again. Cool. So your parents really don't like me or even really think that I'm evolved enough to exist near you. So that's cool. Where do you want to go now? <sighs> I guess we should try and find everyone else, wherever that may be. So just to summarize what I think I understood from this conversation, again, dumb human, um, (laughs) essentially your people work for some sort of very, very powerful other being that plans to eat all of the populace of this planet in some effort to save themselves from being destroyed by this other thing in a weird bullying to get his way kind of way. And we have to figure out how to stop it so that your people can live and my people can live and we don't have to put up with this giant intergalactic space bully. That about sums it up, yes. I'm sorry you had to witness that. I was hoping the meeting with my parents would have been a bit more amicable. I mean, believe me, they didn't make a good impression on me either. Those are my folks. It's fine. You can't always choose who your parents are. My adopted mother, I think she's my adopted mother, is been lying to me all these years, just like yours. It's one thing we do have in common. We should go find everyone else. Okay, let's just check the school first maybe yeah do you just start walking there yes okay so has solarian made any realizations about his powers i have a lot of responsibility (laughs) what happens if you use your power i can hurt those around me how does that happen i have to sacrifice myself no no you have to up your mundane because no well no no, because if you use your powers at all you summon the guy he comes closer the intergalactic space bully gallern gallernon your powers are ridiculously dangerous because they tie this plane, this place to where Galernon is and brings him ever closer. So I have to get rid of my powers. Well, <laughs> you have to be careful in the use of your powers because you have to balance the do I really want to open another tear in the fabric of reality and allow Galernon and his entities to come through? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yes, I've been trying to build that one up and enjoying every use of Aaron's like, I'm going to charge up some burn. I'm going to blow up. Um, do you have a secret <laughs> counter going down? Yes. No! <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday! <laughs> it approaches. Yes, and much more rapidly now that we're, we've had to move on. So they start walking back to the school <laughs> instead of using Solarian's super cosmic abilities to get there. It's more cute and high schooly this way if we walk together. <laughs> Yeah, we're holding hands. Yeah, yeah. It's cute. Jeb and XP are alone at the building. George hasn't arrived yet. 
Because we're going to change that a little bit. Hmm. Xpay and Jeb are in the building in the base together. And Jeb says, again, talked already and had a bit of a conversation and whatnot, right? I'm just going to recap and add some new stuff for you to respond to. Not since I got to the school. Xpay, I've managed to figure out the data that you've passed on to me with the black box that you brought. I have determined that Camp Orgoff the Books was grooming genetically superior children to connect their minds. And I wish you to know, in this capacity... I I was not aware of Camp Org off the books and their own undertakings and efforts, but this is something that I was a lead researcher on myself with the perfect child. Um, and then this happened to me. Howdy. What's this? Am I this? I mean, you, you're my escape valve hatch or, what, or whatnot. I think that I have done whatever happened to me here to myself after I programmed you to one day be able to understand me. Xpay blinks twice. <laughs> programmed but i thought i'm a real person you are well of course i mean real people can't be programmed of course they can they can easily reprogram people all the time it happens as soon as you open youtube oh brainwashing programming brainwashing it's all about the same thing i understand Yes, indeed. So I, I have determined from the Camp Org off the books data that you provided to me that the linked mines are the general's plan to use giant robots to fight Galanon. But so far, every time he's done it, those linked mines have gone insane. So wait, hold on a minute. So the general is trying to build an army of children to fight some godly Galanon? No, the general and but offshoot by, but of course myself and the others that were involved in the program were looking to find genetically superior your children, children with strong genetic code, to link those individuals together so that they could pilot a giant robot in the fight against an extraterrestrial threat. So wouldn't we just stop Sorry, the extra... just wait. Chelsea's brain just blew up. Oh. Are we Power Rangers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, like that's what it sounds like. We're gonna be power rangers. Is, is that good for you? That sounds really cool. I call yellow. Because we're gonna get like big mech suits and Every, then we can combine into one giant mech suit and then we can pow, 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 Every, everyone but Terry is. <laughs> hey, I'm superior too. Superiorly nice. <laughs> Come on, guys. Superiorly nice. I have nice. the best manners, says Terry Chase. <laughs> I'm the glue. Well, Knowing that, that seems like a very viable plan, and I feel like I don't understand why we've been trying to stop it. Honestly, it has always seemed to me like the plan of a 15-year-old boy <laughs> that is, with resources and power, been able to bring and be made true. I, I'm speaking of the general. Keep looking, Evie, you're not there. Uh, <laughs> so, should we be helping him try to get this plan to fruition? That would be up to you and how you wish to follow this through. How do we test the link? From what I can if... tell, there are these silver pods. They look like a flower. I've seen those. That is the location where a giant robot is being put together. There are these small, multi-limbed robotic assistants. The robotic spiders. That build and manage and maintain the robot. What happened if we destroyed my dodos? <laughs> I'm certain they would repair themselves or make new ones to continue about their business. Huh. Phew! <laughs> So realistically, this is actually a good idea and a good plan to fight Gallernon. Gallernon? Gallerlin. That's what I came to understand that to be. Interesting. This is very different information than what I had anticipated. Oh, why did you anticipate it? That the general was a bad guy because that's what people kept saying, and that he was trying to destroy the world along with Alejandra and her aunt. If this threat, existential as it is otherwise, is not truly a thing, if it's all a fictitious lie, then this underhanded controlling and genetic modification and tampering that is being done to unwitting populace is indeed a very, very terrible thing. Mm. And which is why I left them, because I did not believe in the tampering that was going on. It was always my intention to make beautiful children, never ones that served a particular practical purpose, as joining together to pilot a large robot. <laughs> mm, I see your point. What if the children knew they were going to be piloting in a robot and had a choice on whether to choose they wanted to or not? I haven't looked into it too much. However, there is some data in the, the black box that says that if the children are, are aware of it, then it's not as applicable, not as functional. 
Interesting. I will have to ponder the information that you have supplied to me, but I like the idea of navigating a giant robot, and I would like to volunteer as tribute. <laughs> George, you were on your way back to the base, right? After Alejandra ditched you. Yes. Correct? Yeah. However, you round a corner and Alejandra's standing there looking right where you're coming because you're moving at your heightened hyperspeed, right? You're like, George Grady, <laughs> the purple blur. <laughs> and, hey, um, and sure, the purple blur now. The mauve blur. <laughs> It's definitely not mauve. <laughs> Alternate <laughs> lavender. The mauve blur. Ugh. Yes. Is standing there holding a phone and sees you coming and waits. Okay, so I s- screech to a halt right in front of her. Found you. Because he feels he's been all smart. Oh, yes, of course. You are such a tracker. <laughs> such a bitch <clears throat> what you got there uh, my grandmother wishes to converse with you i kind of like without saying anything i just like snatch it out of her hands kind of overly aggressively she like snatch hello 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 prophet tess how are you george not so great i have to say look we need to talk i'd say so did he do it at the jacob estates what did you see it did i see what there's a lot there oh my god God, you're as thick as they come, aren't you? You're as thick in the head as you are in the belly. <laughs> I was just gonna say, don't body shame me. Just learned that phrase, and I, I, no, don't do it. You saw it, though, right? You went there. You mean the monster thing? Yeah. Yeah, of course I did. It's a giant monster thing. Yeah, you saw the finger of Galanon. That's his finger? Gross. <laughs> okay, I lo- yep. <laughs> that's, that's where you went with that. Well, I mean, all of them's kind of gross, but like, what do you know about it? Did you- this is what we're trying to stop, George. This is what you're trying to stop. But like, how? And like, what do you have to do with it? I'm so confused. I've seen the future, George. Well, I guess that's I've your thing. I've sent you to the future, yeah. George. You see the devastation if Galanon wins. Oh, is that like the desert planet thing? Alejandra's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I came back with like sand was everywhere. Is that is that what happens if we don't stop him? The earth is just dirt? Well, everything dies, George. Almost everything dies. Galanon will consume it all. Well, he said almost. What's left behind? What can survive Galanon? That which just gets overlooked. It's like crumbs on a plate after you eat a sandwich, dum-dum. Oh, there's no nothing left on my plate. But anyways, I understand the concept. <laughs> 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 so how, how do I stop it then? You you sent me, like, am I important? How do, can I do anything? You can't stop Galanon. I know future you is trying to do it, but that's the wrong way, George. So I'm flipping the script. I'm calling you. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we need to work with Galanon. What? How? We need to supplant his people, the chosen sentinels, and convince Galanon that we, humanity, should be the sentinels. Who who are the sentinels? They're the ones that go from planet to planet, signaling Galanon when the planet is ready for him, the it, to descend and feast. And in so doing, their own world is saved. So you want us to do what they're doing and take their jobs? <laughs> and we continue the cycle as we go around trying to look for other planets? Yeah, for- because there's no unemployment line here, George, <laughs> if we don't get the job. I get that, but then we're just continuing on this terrible thing and we have to find other planets to destroy for him or it? Look, dum dum. You, this is what future you is trying to do in this cruel, cryptic, kid controlling way. He's trying to be friends with Galanon? What is. Are you deliberately trying to. It's just slowing things down. Can George get it? I get what she's trying to say. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that he fully understands or I fully understand how but I'm the asking general you, is. Yeah. Like, 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 I would like you to ask better questions. <laughs> what is the general's plan? How does controlling children. I don't know the general's plan? It just doesn't work. He's tried a billion different things. You've tried a billion different things, and you need to stop him, George. And do what exactly? I don't know what you want from me. Just to stop the general? How does that stop Galanon? If you stop the general from fighting Galanon, we have a chance of convincing Galanon that we are the right people. But I don't want to, co- like, do thing. I don't want to destroy other planets for this guy. Would you rather be dead? I'd rather not be a monster. Done enough of that as it is. Okay, George, talk to the rest of the team. 
figure out what you're willing to do. You have the seedling. Oh, is that the weird cat thing in the fridge? I didn't know what to call it. We just haven't named it. It's gross, though. Does he think I know what's in his fridge, Alejandra? <laughs> He said, you know that we have the seedling. So I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Is the, the If you have a cat in a fridge, <laughs> it's probably not the seedling. It's not a cat per se, but... Look, dum dum. I know you have the seedling. <laughs> okay, what do I do with it? If you and your team choose to become the sentinels for Galanon, one of you needs to consume it. Oh, God. I mean, I'll eat just about anything, but I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds bad. Well, I guess I'm going to talk to my team, but I'm pretty sure I know what they're going to say. That's what I told you to do. I know. I'm following your advice. Freaking prophetess. Okay, I'm done with this one, Alejandra. <laughs> you can hang up and leave now. <laughs> I handed her phone Dang, back. You, you're, you're the worst grandmother at times, you know. You send me to the Jacob Estates just to get captured with no real intention there. And now it is all because you wish to tell these people this weird exposition. <laughs> Listen, you! <laughs> Alejandra just starts walking away from you, Jordan. Well, I guess I better go see my friends. we got lots to talk about. And he's gonna purple haze it out of there. Raise your glass and drink with the enemy. Raise your glass and sing with the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. And raise your glass and toast to the enemy. Raise your glass and sing to the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales. A Curated Masks, a new generation game set in the superhero teenage world of Halcyon City. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure.